on World News Tonight. More taxes. India sees yet more tax hikes on full alongside controversial oil dealings with Russia. Breaking free. Despite increasing infections, Chinese citizens brace the cold and begin settling in their normal lives. Farewell Pele. The stadium where the magic first happened pays an emotional tribute as fitting send-off for the football legend. And lunar festivities. China prepares to welcome the year of the rabbit with spectacular displays of light. This is Ada Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and you are joining us on tonight's Bulletin on World News Tonight, bringing you news from around the globe. We have a series of stories lined up tonight from updates from the COVID pandemic to political scandals. But first up, we start off with neighboring India. As the nation has raised its windfall tax on petroleum, crude oil and aviation turbine fuel, according to a government order dated for the 2nd of January. It raised the windfall tax on crude oil to 2,100. Indian rupees per ton for 1,700 Indian rupees. The federal government also raised export tax on diesel to 6.5 Indian rupees per litre from 5 Indian rupees, while raising the windfall tax on ATF to 4.5 Indian rupees per litre from 1.5 Indian rupees. India, the world's largest consumer and importer of oil, has been buying crude barrels at well below a $60 price cap agreed by the West. The country in July imposed the windfall tax on crude oil producers and levies on exports of gasoline, diesel and aviation fuel after private refiners sought overseas markets to gain from robust refining margins instead of selling at lower than market rates in the country. The government levies tax on windfall profits made by oil producers on any price they get above a threshold of USD 75 to 76 per barrel. Earlier on 16th December, the government slashed the windfall profit tax levied on domestically produced crude oil as well as on export of diesel and ATF following a decline in global oil prices according to an official order. The levy on crude oil produced by companies such as Oil and Natural Gas Corporation has been cut steeply to INR 1700 per tonne from INR 4900, the order dated December 15th said. Crude oil pumped out of the ground and from below seabed is refined and converted into fuel like petrol, diesel and aviation turbine fuel. The basket of crude oil that India imports averaged USD 77.88 per barrel in December as against USD 87.55 last month. It averaged USD 91.7 zero per barrel in October. The levy on fuel exports is based on cracks or margins that refiners earn on overseas shipments. These margins are primarily a difference between the international oil price realized and the cost. The official lying in state of former Pope Benedict XVI started Monday ahead of his funeral on Thursday. The first day saw tens of thousands of mourners visit St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican to pay their final respects. Tens of thousands of people filled St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican on Monday to pay tribute to former Pope Benedict XVI, who passed away at the age of 95 on New Year's Eve. His body was moved from his residence to the Basilica on Monday morning. Just after 9 a.m., doors swung open, allowing the public to enter and say their last goodbyes. Despite tight security, mourners continuously streamed in. I think it's a um, once-in-a-lifetime experience, you know, first-hand, seeing, you know, uh, the Pope now late, yeah, the being, being put in the, 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 the St. Peter's Basilica. It's a beautiful experience. The Vatican police say around 65,000 people visited the site on Monday alone. Among them were Italian President Sergio Mattarella and Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney. The body of the Pope Emeritus will lay in state for three days until Wednesday. The Holy See press office says the funeral mass will take place in St. Peter's Square on Thursday morning. And for the first time in more than 600 years, the funeral of a former Pope will be presided over by the current pontiff. His body will be buried according to his wishes in the crypt under St. Peter's Basilica. Elected in 2005, Benedict was the first German Pope in a thousand years. He also became the first pope in more than 600 years to resign. After stepping away from the job in 2013, he lived the remainder of his life behind Vatican City walls. 
Now moving to the fears of another global COVID wave. China's daily infection rates are still on the rise, but citizens brace for the cold and the risk of catching COVID and returning to a normal life in this new year. China is facing a slew of challenges, with Australia being the latest country to mandate travelers from China to provide negative COVID-19 test results from January 5th, joining a number of nations that have implemented similar restrictions. Some people in China's key cities braved the cold and a spike in COVID-19 infections to return to regular life on Monday. In Beijing, people gathered to sled or ice skate on a frozen lake in the city on Sunday, nearly a month after China dropped stringent zero-COVID measures to adopt a strategy of living with the virus. However, a wave of infections has since erupted nationwide. State broadcaster CCTV reported on Monday that frontline medical staff are working around the clock to treat COVID-19 patients. In this hospital in the eastern city of Nanjing, patients have flooded the intensive care unit, with 80 percent of its patients aged 65 and over, many of them with underlying health conditions. That's according to doctors quoted as saying by CCTV. China's biggest holiday, Lunar New Year, begins on January 21st this year. Many tourist attractions are opening up after shutting last August due to a COVID-19 outbreak. According to Chinese news outlet Caixin on Sunday, citing researchers in the Chinese commercial hub, infections in city of Beijing, Guangzhou, Shanghai and Chongqing are close to ending. But they added infections will peak in other urban areas in the latter half of January. Monday's single new COVID death, flat from the previous day, does not match the experience of other countries after they reopened. The official death toll of just under 5,300 since the pandemic began compares with more than one million in the United States. China has said it only counts deaths of COVID patients caused by pneumonia and respiratory failure as being related to COVID. The relatively low death count is also inconsistent with rising demand reported by funeral parlors in several cities. According to British-based health data firm Airfinity, about 9,000 people are probably dying each day from COVID in China. Authorities around the world are imposing or considering curbs on travelers from China. The United States, Britain, France and India are among those asking for a negative COVID test. Over in the United Kingdom, a new poll has shown nearly two-thirds of the Britons now support a referendum on rejoining the European Union, with Britain facing severe economic challenges following the break from its major trading partner. There is grow growing disillusionment among the population over the promises made by Brexiteers. That has been reflected in the latest survey, showing that nearly two-thirds want a second referendum, with the vote now expected to go on favour in returning to the EU. It's been almost two years since a British flag was lowered from the European institutions, and that was supposed to be that. But now there are reports in the British media that the infamous referendum may not be as final as the government of the day made out. A poll commissioned by The Independent found 65% of Britons want a repeat of the 2016 vote on Brexit. Just one year ago, that number was 55. The UK is being battered by economic and government crises and still seems unable to control its borders. 56% of Britons are convinced that leaving the EU hurt the economy. Twelve months ago, that number was 44. The Brexit benefits promoted so passionately by its most prominent advocates haven't materialised, or at least not yet, and the country's global influence has worsened significantly. Now, the poll finds a majority of those questioned would like to see a return to the European family, 54% as opposed to 46 previously. But there is a snag. Only 22% of the same sample group believed it would be possible to call a new referendum within five years. Going into a short commercial break, we'll be back soon with more World News.
Welcome back to World News tonight. The European Parliament moved to lift the immunity of two MEPs amid a major corruption scandal that has sent shockwaves through Brussels. President of the European Parliament, Roberta Metzola, launched an urgent procedure to waive the legal protection of two lawmakers following a request from the Belgian judicial authorities. It's another twist in the EU's bribery scandal, with two more MEPs now in the spotlight. The announcement was made by the president herself, Roberta Metzola, in a tweet. Following a request from the Belgian judicial authorities, I have launched an urgent procedure for the waiver of immunity of two members of the European Parliament. There will be no impunity, none. According to sources close to the investigation, the two MEPs in question are Belgian Mark Tarabella and Italian Andrea Cozzolino. They'd already been suspended by their respective national parties and the full chamber will vote on removing their immunity later this month. Both are targets of the investigation that led to the arrest of Eva Kaili, the former vice president of the EU parliament and three others, including her partner, Francesco Giorgi. It's Giorgi himself who allegedly accused Cozzolino, his former boss, and Tarabella of taking money from Qatar. Last month, Belgian police conducted about 20 searches of homes and offices, of MEPs, lobbyists and parliamentary staff. They suspected that some may be taking bribes from Qatar to influence EU decision-making. At least 1.5 million euros in cash were seized by authorities, a scandal that has sent shockwaves through the core of EU institutions. The four defendants are currently behind bars while they await their trial. North Korea has sacked Park jong shon the second most powerful military official after leader Kim Jong-un. The vice chairman of the Central Military Commission of the Ruling Workers' Party and a secretary of the party's Central Committee was replaced by Ri jong jil at the committee's annual meeting last week. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has sacked the second most powerful military official after him, according to state media. Pak Jong Chon was the vice chairman of the Central Military Commission of the Rulers' Working Party and a secretary of the party's Central Committee. He's been replaced by Ri Yong Gil at the committee's annual meeting last week. No reason for the change was given. Pyongyang regularly revamps its leadership, and the year end party gathering has often been used to announce personnel reshuffles and major policy decisions. The party's Central Military Commission, which is headed by Kim, is considered the country's most powerful military decision-making body, above the Defence Ministry. Pak's replacement came as Kim called for developing new intercontinental ballistic missiles and a larger nuclear arsenal to counter the US and South Korea, as key to North Korea's 2023 defence strategy. An emotional Brazil began paying its final respects to football legend Pele with a wake at the stadium where he first took the world's breath away with his dazzling skills throughout the day. Thousands of fans and football dignitaries slowly filed through the Villa Belmiro, home to Pele's long-term club, Santos. Mourners in Brazil lined up to see the body of soccer legend Pele, who laid in an open casket in the coastal city of Santos on Monday, for his 24-hour wake. Long lines snaked outside Vila Belmiro Stadium, home of the Santos Soccer Club to see Pele, who died last week at the age of 82 after battling colon cancer. His body arrived early Monday morning in Santos, where he lived most of his life after traveling from Sao Paulo's Albert Einstein Hospital. Former Brazil midfielder Zé Roberto and Pele's son helped place his coffin in the center of the field. Some fans wiped away tears as they crossed the pitch. Others waiting outside to pay their respects credited Pele with elevating Brazil's standing in the world. It's a loss of an idol for everyone, a great person who raised the country's name in all parts of the globe. Pele, who scored more than 1,000 goals for Santos, is the only man to win the World Cup three times as a player. The city's press office said some 5,000 journalists from all over the world had been accredited to cover the wake. Sao Paulo State Military Police said in a statement they had prepared a special operation called the King Pele Operation to ensure public order. 
On Tuesday, a procession carrying Pele's coffin will pass through the streets of Santos, ending at the Ecumenical Memorial Necropolis Cemetery, where he will be buried in a private ceremony. It was exactly 100 years ago when the House of Representatives last failed to elect a House Speaker on the first ballot. By all appearances, we are likely to see this rare occurrence happen again tomorrow. This comes as House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy's quest to become Speaker of the House has run into new headwinds as the lower chamber of Congress prepares for a leadership vote. Tonight, Republicans are just hours away from taking back control of the House, hoping to tackle an ambitious conservative agenda. But tomorrow they have to elect a speaker, and that may be harder than it sounds. Do you want the vote for speaker tomorrow? Republican leader Kevin McCarthy, who won the party's nomination for the job in November, now faces a small right-wing revolt, more than a dozen members preparing to oppose him. With Republicans' narrow majority, it's enough votes to keep him out of the speaker's job. Nine Republicans releasing a letter pressing McCarthy for rule changes, including making it easier to remove a speaker. But McCarthy has the support of former President Trump and several high-profile House conservatives. And his allies are urging the party to unite around him, hoping to avoid a speaker's race going beyond the first ballot for the first time in 100 years. Republicans hoping to settle their leadership debate and focus on their agenda, including targeting Biden administration priorities like hiring new IRS agents and ramping up investigations of COVID, the record migrant surge on the southern border, and the FBI. We can't do anything until we elect that speaker. We've got so much work behind us, and we need to start on the very first day. U.S. actor and a Marvel star Jeremy Renner suffered a blunt chest trauma and orthopedic injuries and is still in intensive care. And according to his spokesperson, he's out of surgery now, but remains in a critical condition after an accident with a snowplow. Jeremy was airlifted to hospital on Sunday after an accident while clearing snow outside his home in Nevada. The U.S. has been battered by snowstorms, killing dozens of people. Jeremy's family expressed their gratitude to the incredible doctors and nurses looking after him. The family also thanked the local police and fire services and said that they were tremendously overwhelmed and appreciative of the outpouring of love and support from his fans. Before the accident, Renner was reportedly clearing a road outside his home in Reno, Nevada, using his personal snowplow so his family could get out after a heavy storm. At the time of the accident, parts of western Nevada were covered with snow. The Reno area received around six to 12 inches of snow at elevations below 5,000 feet between New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and up to 18 inches at higher elevations. The 51-year-old was the only person involved in the incident, the Washoe County Sheriff's Office said, adding that it was being investigated. The U.S. was battered by a major snowstorm over the New Year weekend with at least 60 people in eight states killed. Thousands of homes experienced power cuts and travel was severely disrupted. Two-time Oscar nominee Renner is best known for his role as Clint Barton or Hawkeye in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, starring in several Avengers films and in the spin-off television series Hawkeye. Renner had shared updates previously on the amount of snow in the area, tweeting in December that Lake Tahoe snowfall is no joke. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Electric car mega Tesla says it delivered a record 1.3 million vehicles last year, 40% more than in 2021. It comes after the company delivered more than 405,000 vehicles in the last three months of 2022. Russian gas production and exports plummeted in 2022, Russia's largest gas producer Gazprom said. The company exported 100.9 billion cubic meters of gas in 2022, a decrease of 45.5% from 2021 export levels. Rafa Nadal suffered his second straight defeat at the United Cup mixed team tournament, falling to Australia's Alex de Mina as concerns about the world number two's earlier season form grew ahead of his Australian Open title defence. Violence spilled into the streets of Bolivia's Santa Cruz, with police going up against protesters angry at the arrest of the regional governor, a right-wing opposition leader. The protests are the latest face-off between Santa Cruz, led by Governor Luis Fernando, and leftist President Louis Arce's government. The Israeli army confirmed carrying out the raid to raise the homes of two Palestinians near the occupied West Bank city of Jenin, who killed one of its commanders last year before they were shot dead.
And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now, China is preparing for their Luna Festival, Luna New Year, and we are leaving you tonight with their festivities coming into life. Stay safe and have a good night.